started, I'd like to introduce one of the Office of University Research's new members, Dr. Eileen Vo. She is the university's new uh, research compliance officer. Did I say that right, Eileen? Yes, you did. Hello, everyone. <laughs> you all will see a lot of Eileen. You will also hear from her. The IRB actually operates under her office. She focuses on research compliance. Um, so I wanted to say welcome to Eileen and also to introduce her to you all. Thank you. You're welcome. So as I begin this afternoon talking about research and you as a researcher, I wanted to share a few things with you about what you should know that you may not know. So the starting point for many of us is what is my research interest or what is research? And that could be several things for many of us. You know, you're trying to research a particular question or this, you may have a grant or you may observe certain trends in your classroom that you, you might say, mm, I want to observe this class versus another class and identify if there's a way that I can improve my teaching. That in itself could be research and you may want to write about it. But in order to do that, you've got to find out how do I start? How do I do that? Um, and one of the biggest thing is when you start research, you want to make sure one, that it's impactful, that it has meaning, um, that it's organized and it's advanced. It's advancing the literature. And what I mean by that is we don't write just to be writing. We write to expand the current body of literature or it may be something we're introducing that's new. You know, when we hear a lot right now about artificial intelligence, Everybody's like, oh, wow, I want to integrate that into my class. Yes, that is impactful and that is very advancing. It's moving forward and it's something that many of us can write, um, begin writing on and researching. Oftentimes we're like, okay, I've got to have this big idea, but what's associated with that idea? So you're ultimately breaking it down into pieces so that it becomes this one single research question that you can work from that and to begin to prepare an article, or prepare your research, and ultimately your um, IRB packet. Now, as we move forward, you may have common, you may face some challenges. Many of them are common among many of us as we have gone down this research journey or this road. Um, you want to ask yourself, am I filling a gap? Is there a gap in the literature? Um, or am I doing this to um, complete coursework, or is it a means for me to improve the coursework that I'm um, that I'm ultimately doing? Oftentimes, many of us have to fill out a performance evaluation every year, and we're looking at our work, or rather, we're being evaluated on that. And as professors, we're thinking, okay, what can I improve? How can I improve on that? But from the student perspective, you may also be in there in the classroom and you have a topic that you may want to research. And when you have when you run into that, you may ask your professor, like, would you be interested in writing an article with me or conducting research? And if that's the case, then that has many parts, many moving parts. And what I mean by that is you and the professor have to will probably have to complete the city training and it's human subject training that involves training in the event that you decide to conduct surveys or if you as a professor decide to survey your students, you must obtain their consent just to ensure that there will be no harm. And ultimately, many of us are trying to publish. And so again, if you're publishing, you are going to need approval from the Institutional Review Board. And when we're researching, some of that also involves conducting a literature review meaning what else is out there in the field about this specific topic that you're interested in researching before you start writing or researching you're like okay what is out there you know earlier i said identifying the gap where does where will your research fit are you expanding upon it and again or are or do you see a gap and you're filling that and then also you're thinking from both sides whether you're a student or a professor you're like, okay, wow, how am I going to find the time to fit this in? You know, we talk about work-life school balance. Well, sometimes it's, you know, it's very hard. It's very challenging. Um, and then also another part of that is once you decide to begin your research, and if you do decide to include humans, meaning conduct surveys, 
or uh, whether it's online or in person, you may need, you will need to recruit participants. And that's where that piece about the consent form comes in. And then you would also be working with your professor or your advisor to guide you through this, to help you make sense of your data, but also for you to identify and select the most appropriate research methodology. And then whenever you're doing research, you know, just as if while you're in school and working, it's really important to make sure you have a support system because all of this can be very overwhelming. There's competing deadlines. Um, and then also the university has certain protocols which with which you must abide. And then also if you plan to publish, that's another hurdle that you may have to um, face. And particularly if you want to not just publish, you may also want to present at a local conference, you know, um, particularly if you're a professor or if you are a member of a professional organization. These are just different ways that you can expand and also get your um, research out to, to get more coverage. Um, you know, particularly once you publish, you may get the bug and say, hey, I like this. I want to do it some more. But it's not necessarily an easy process beginning this. And so right here, just a few practical steps you know, for your research journey, not necessarily meaning that everybody has to do this. You know, one, you want to prioritize your coursework, um, whether it's, just, again, the student or the faculty member, but also you want to build positive relationship, relationships, but you also are going to need to read. And what I mean by that is that's a part of that literature review, just reading and just finding out what is out there on the topic that you may want to research. It may be very little. And if that's the case, then you're definitely, you know, you've hit the ball, you know, because you're going to be expanding the literature. Then there may be a lot out there, but you may want to expand on what current scholars are writing. And that's also a good route to go. And then after you, once you begin collecting all of these articles and reviewing and reading them, you want to organize that into some type of format because you're going to need to go back to that and then ultimately, you're going to get into a routine where you're writing and just refining, revising, and you may work in the lab or you may be going to the library, reviewing your literature or at home, or you may be in the field. And then also there's meetings that you will have with your advisor and your advisor will be providing feedback, insight, and also providing you um, help because there may be some questions that you may not have anticipated. And then throughout this, you might, you will need to set some goals, short-term and long-term goals, you know, just as if we're balancing like the academic year and we say, okay, I have this class this week, I have this assignment due, or I have this test to administer. You'll also have to find time to write, also find time to conduct research and even fill out those, you fill, submit the IRB application. Also, if you're going to try to get published, all of that, again, as I mentioned before, can be overwhelming. But the biggest thing here is you're going to need to prioritize these steps. And also, if you have any questions, please feel free to stop me at any time or I can take them at the end. And earlier you heard me mention something about consent and also the city certification. The city certification is the human subject training. It is offered to all faculty, students, and staff free of charge. Um, there's a link that Eileen and myself, we send out to students to access. In addition to that, um, the IRB team has always visited classes to present to students and to faculty uh, more to present about the app applying to the Institutional Review Board. You know, for instance, if you say, hey, I want to do this, you know, for instance, I want to um, I want to put up flyers. I want to survey students. Well, there's a process to that. You don't just put up the flyers. You have to obtain that permission, but you also have to submit an application to the IRB uh, having, online. But but having before, problem joining the webinar. But before, thank you, Dr. Reed. But before that, um, you must um, complete the city certification, and we'll have more information on that later in the presentation. And part of that pre um, training. Gives you, provides you more information on how to ensure that you are not harming your subjects. In this case, um, the training is titled human subject training, meaning humans, meaning the participants. Um, it sounds <laughs> cold, but that's just how it's referred to. 
and you're also going to be collecting data. But before you begin collecting data. That reminds data, me, I, my husband and I were on our flight yeah, out of Dallas Dr. and we yeah. were running a Dr. little Reed. bit late so that- Dr. Reed, Dr. Reed, you're, okay, thank you. Are you muted, Dr. Reed? Okay, thank you. Um, so you want, uh, as I was saying, you, you're going to begin with the data collection. You're going to provide your participants with a consent form, meaning they 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 consent to participating in your research, but that they can voluntarily withdraw at any time without any repercussions. Like, let me give an example. In the event that I decided to provide or administer a survey to two or three of my classes, just to notice some differences um, in testing or just to see or how some students perceive certain concepts, well, I would administer a consent form um, to students. And on that consent form, it would indicate that if they chose not to participate, they would not face any adverse re um, per, um, repercussions from that or effects, meaning I would not change, you know, lower their grade or they would not be able to participate. But just, just in that same, on that same vein, anytime you're conducting research, you want to provide individuals with a consent form and inform them that their participation is voluntary, but then also that their information will be kept confidential as well and or anonymous. In addition to that, that your study, you want to ensure that your study is not providing or having any type of harm on individuals, whether it's legal, physical, social, or psychological. And then more importantly, as you're researching you want to make sure that you're not just lifting. And what I mean by lifting is plagiarizing. As you're conducting your um, literature review, you'll see lots and lots of research written on your topic. And you might say, oh, I want to just, oh, this would really be good in my research. Well, you want to avoid plagiarism at all costs because particularly those individuals who are well-published, they're tracking and there's a way that they can track any time any material from their articles are being used or lifted without their permission. So you want to ensure that you're avoiding plagiarism and reporting all of your information accurately. And as we move into the use of chat GPT and Claude and other forms of artificial intelligence, you want to make sure that you're aware of the universities as well as any publishers rules regarding the use of artificial intelligence and also making sure there's no conflicts of interest. And what I mean by that is, for instance, if you are working for a company and you're writing an article or you're publishing material, you want to make sure that, um, that there's no conflict or meaning that you're not getting paid to promote um, the results of their research. You know, that's just an example, but ensuring that there's no conflict of interest between you and the topic and or the subjects in, for which you're um, writing about or covering. And all of this stems from earlier studies referred to as Bel the Belmont Report that had several ethical um, issues or fallacies. And the whole idea was you want to ensure that there's respect for the human subjects or for the persons who are participating in your research, that there's benefit beneficence and as well as justice. You don't want to, you want to make sure that you're not being, um, you're exploiting anyone or that you're doing any type of harm. And again, that's part of the reason why we ensure that everyone who comes through the, um, who submits an application through the Institutional Review Board has completed the city certification because it gives you a lot of history as well as modules on what um, a re surrounding or around research ethics. I will say that when you take that um, training, it, it, it does take at least about eight hours. Um, it's long, but the certification lasts three years. It expires after three years. And the reason I say that is because when you submit your IRB application, you have to provide a copy of your certificate of completion of the city certification. Now, I will repeat this. This is not just for the faculty member, but it's also for the student. And what I mean by that is if you are collaborating with one of your students or students, each of you all must submit a copy of that certificate of completion in that IRB um, packet, okay?
And then just wanted to give a little background about the Office of University Research. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Eileen Vo is the new University Research Compliance Officer, which is located in the Office of University Research, which is also a part of the university's Office of the Chief Academic Officer. And this office provides service, support, and compliance oversight for all sponsored work at UDC. And what I mean by sponsored work, those grants or external grants, um, as well as funds or agreements that are being awarded to the university and faculty. And the office is comprised of research compliance and research security, Office of Sponsored Programs and Technology Commercialization. Um, it supports faculty, students, and staff at the university, and it serves as a subject matter expert around universities, um, around research oversight, guidance, and regulations. And ultimately, this office will be your go-to if you have any questions in the area of grant awards, as well as any questions about grant funding because oftentimes you will see where the Lunch and Learns webinars have invited speakers from some of the scientific organizations such as National Science Foundation and or NI National Institutes of Health that are providing information for researchers about research awards as well as other research opportunities that they may offer. Uh, I'm at the point now that I'm able to take questions. Does anyone have questions? If not, I um, can always be reached by email. You can connect with both Dr. Vo and I. Right here, I have posted our information. I've also posted the IRB's email address. And you can email Dr. Vo and I um, in the event that you'd like us to visit your class and provide a presentation to you and your students specifically as it relates to the city certification, as well as completing the IRB apl um, application. And I will say that many of you have heard that we are moving to a new system, Cayuse. Uh, we're still in that transition. We haven't fully moved uh, moved, moved towards Cayuse. Um, I will leave that for Dr. Vo. That will be <laughs> her baby. Um, and then also, you will be receiving more information from Dr. Vo about the IRB. If there are no other questions, I'd like to thank everyone for today's Lunch and Learn. And, and so Dr. Plummer, I wanna thank you. Uh, I, you know, whenever you do this presentation, I continue to learn something new. And I just wanna make sure that the people who are here that you really take advantage of talking to them, you know, when you are in the process of looking at your research so that they can really help you put together a really nice package uh, for you to turn into the IRB. And it is critical uh, that you get the city training. So as early as if you haven't already done it, uh, please take advantage of it. You know, one of the things I wanna encourage graduate students to do is you, even before the summer ends, you know, to take the city training. So as you come into the fall that you already have it available. So Dr. Plummer, as you end our Lunch and Learn for 2024, <laughs> we are so excited to have you as a part of our team. Uh, you bring us such in, uh, valuable information that I think is really important for not only faculty, but also graduate students who are becoming new and upcoming researchers. So I wanna say happy new year. Uh, happy holidays. Uh, we will be picking it back up in January uh, so that we can then uh, continue with this. But we would love to hear from you uh, for you to tell us what topics would you like for us to cover as we continue our Lunch and Learns for 2025. So thank you so much and be safe and have a happy holiday. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Reed.